Hello guys, I'm Adriana and today we'll learn how to diagnose an Apple device in a correct way. We are going to see a very common case from our workshop, so if you've got in your hands an iPhone or if you are a technician eager to learn and excel, stay until the end of this tutorial because we'll learn how to make a fast and accurate diagnosis. In order to offer a good diagnosis, we'll start with the disassembly process. We won't be able to give a quote without seeing the inside components, so this step is very important. Here we found the first clue. The battery is detached, which means that the device was manipulated before. We are going to disconnect all the connectors and remove the motherboard. After removing the flex, we extract carefully the motherboard. In the next step, we are going to go to the microscope to look for signs of manipulation, corrosion, breakage and things of style. Not even 5 seconds have passed and we have the first clue. Beside the components, we've got solder balls. Here we've got another one. Over this FPC connector we found burned flux. Let's continue our visual inspection of the motherboard to get a conclusion. We can observe little solder balls all over the motherboard. Honestly, what I'm seeing, I don't like it at all. This connector was worked before with a hot air station. From the volume of flux that we found, it seems that they tried to separate the motherboards. At this point, already I've got my conclusion and my decision is not to work this device because it has a very bad manipulation. We can repair one failure and it might came out another one and so on. But we, as we are here for learning new things and techniques, we'll continue our, our repair process and in this way you can take out your own conclusion. Let's take the motherboard and separate the A part from the B1. Remember that this model, the motherboard is made up of two parts. For the separation process, we'll use this tool of KC brand. We'll use this K303 Pro. I'm working with this brand from quite time and it works like in the first day. For the moment, I'm very happy and I recommend this tool. Remember that most of the tools that we are using in our laboratory are available on mobile1.eu, so check it. 
If you have any doubt about it, please leave your comment above. Thank you. We continue with our repair and to separate the motherboard we need to work with 180 Celsius degrees. When we have reached this temperature we can remove the top part. To remove the upper part we can use an antistatic tweezers. After removing the motherboard we will cool down the machine. If you like this type of content, please give it a strong like and share it and I personally will continue uploading real repairs of our laboratory. Thank you! We go to the microscope to observe closer the components. The truth is, we've got solder balls from all sides. Personally, I knew it from the first moment. From my experience, investing time in this type of repair are not worth it. Particularly, this device is very bad manipulated and to solve it we have to extract most of the integrate circuits and on many occasions we have to remove even the CPU. If it was a water damage device, as claimed by the customer, then it's worth investing part of your time. With these devices, in some occasions, the technicians go overboard with the temperature, so underneath these circuits, the solder balls have come together and practically the result is an unusable device. If it was about a specific area, one or two damaged circuits, so yes, it was worth trying to find a solution. But when we found signs of molten solder lead all over the motherboard, it means that the device has received a lot of temperature. Let's clean the motherboard and try to remove some balls and in this way check the consumption with the help of a power laboratory source. At most we can only remove the visible balls. Remember that below the integrate circuits is the same story and without reballing these circuits we cannot do anything. We are going to use the e-socket tool to join the two parts of the motherboard. In this way, we can check the consumption with the power laboratory source. Now, with the help of the power laboratory source, we turn on the motherboard. We can observe that the motherboard isn't ok and there is no need to lose more time to try to repair it. I'll take advantage of this tutorial to show you the steps to follow to close this motherboard. In the first step we have to change the alloy. 
Then we use a desoldering wick to remove the old solder lid. After the motherboard remains clean, we use a stencil and we apply solder lid. We remove the stencil and we place the motherboard on the top of the heating machine. When we reach 180 Celsius degrees, 185 Celsius degrees, the solder has melted and we can remove the motherboard. To join the two parts of the motherboard, I like to work with this tool. With 220 Celsius degrees, we'll obtain a good result. We assemble the device and deliver it to the customer. Guys, here is Leonardo. This was today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.